welcome to Seniors Count. I'm your host, Tula Mall. On our show, we believe that you are the foundation on which Boston was built. So our goal is to connect you to resources, benefits, and information to enhance your life. Thank you for joining us. My guest today is Joseph Betancourt, joining us from the One Care Ombudsman Office and Elderly Commission Advocate, Ivy Pham. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us here. Of course. So I'm going to start with you, Ivy. Can you please talk to us a little bit about what is the SHINE program? SHINE is the Serving for Health Insurance Needs of Everyone. And um, that includes seniors and the disabled. So, okay, so just elaborate a little bit on mm -hmm. that. So it's a program where people can do what? So what? If I was... um, the SHINE is, is serving health insurance. So okay. health insurance, question regarding health insurance. Okay, so this so is for older adults, you said? Yes. Right? Um, so if I'm an older adult, and that's what, age 55, 60? Um, usually 60. To okay, so if I'm step. 60 and above, yes. and I have a question about my health insurance. Yes. Um, I would go find a SHINE program, yes. right? Okay. Um, what is the role of a SHINE counselor? The role of a SHINE counselor is to um, advocate and help review present coverage, um, comparison of plans, protects Medicare beneficiaries from paying for bills they should not pay. Okay, um, and so let's go back to the scenario. So, okay. you know, there's an older adult who's like 60, you know, they just, they need some help with all the new insurance stuff. How can a SHINE counselor help them? Uh, we would sit down and go over mostly personal information. Mm -hmm. um, we would find out what they will need when they turn 65. Oh, okay, because 65 is when... 65, as soon as you turn 65, mm -hmm. um, you have three months before your birth date and three months after your birth date to join. And if you're still working at 65, you can skip uh, Medicare. Oh, and, okay. And when you retire, when you get ready to retire, you would contact us again and you have a special enrollment for that. So that's about seven months. Oh, so for people between 60 and 65, can they come to you with questions about their health insurance or is yes. this only about questions around Medicare? Um, well, there are people who are 60 and they're on disability. Oh, okay. So there's, you so know. So that's who covers that. Yes, we can sit down and talk. Okay, that's interesting. Um, how, um, wh when is open enrollment? So you mentioned that three months before your birthday and mm -hmm. then three months after your birthday, mm -hmm. unless you're not retiring, mm -hmm. and then you have seven months by the, by the, around the time that you retire, right. right? But if you are already on Medicare and you mm -hmm. need some changes, mm -hmm. there's a thing called open enrollment, correct? Right, so this is for Part D, okay. which um, Part D open enrollment is uh, right now mm -hmm. until December 7th. Okay. That's the deadline. And what is Part D? Can you tell us Part a little D bit? Part D is a prescription drug. Um, it's a, you have to purchase this Part D. So it's like an, in addition to like an extra piece of your insurance. Yes, you, you have to purchase it, even if you're not on, medic, uh, on um, prescription mm -hmm. and you refuse to buy it you will hit a penalty when someday you got sick and you decide to go on Medicare D because you need payment for your prescription. They will give you a penalty for how many months that you miss. So, so the months that you did weren't paying. Yes. Okay. And what is Medicare B? Medicare B is... Um, Medicare B is when you go to the doctor for your, let's say, a procedure. They pay only 80%. Okay. Um, a is hospital. So B, it's like uh, durable equipment, things like you have to have a procedure. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also buy a supplement. Okay. When, the su when Medicare B does not pay for everything. So when you buy a supplement, it will help you pay for some of that. So Medicare B is an also an additional piece you have to, you can purchase if you want. No, you have to. Oh, you have, have to buy. It. Okay. You have to have A and B. Okay. A, B, and D. Mm -hmm. And C is a supplement that's 
optional. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Um, if someone is needing some assistance looking at, over their Medicare and trying to figure out the very complicated world of their insurance, yes. where can they find a Shine Counselor? Um, City Hall, room 271, Elderly Commission. Okay. Um, but Ethos at 555 Emory Road, they have Shine Counselor there too. Okay, yeah. great. Um, well, thanks for telling us about that. That's very interesting. Joseph, um, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? Good. Let me, let me tell you, thank you for having me here for the second time. Now we can speak freely in English. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So now for people who watch the show in Spanish, um, you know, maybe people were wondering what that was. We were, we were doing this show about Shine and... Um, one Care in Spanish a couple weeks ago. The One so Care now, Ombudsman. The One Care Ombudsman, yes. And now we're going to do it in English for our English-speaking audience. So again, thank you both for being here. So let's start. Explain to me what is One Care Ombudsman. Let's, let's break that in two parts. Okay. Uh, I'll explain about One Care. One Care is a new initiative from the federal government and the state to combine Mass Health and Medicare to provide one specific plan where the consumer can put all their services into one basket and be more controlled and more adhered to and to make sure that nothing is missed. And that is called, called One Care. Mm, okay. Now the Ombudsman Office, what the Ombudsman Office is, what we do is we ensure that all the other plans that are involved with One Care, like Commonwealth Care, uh, Fallon, and also top health care uh, are doing their job. Okay. I, I really, if an individual calls us and tells us about some certain issues that they have, and we'll contact those particular managers and find out what's going on, explain the situation, they'll give us feedback, and we also have a specific period of time that we need the feedback from them. So if a certain amount of time goes by and they haven't responded, we'll, come, we'll go back and we'll go escalate it even higher. Uh -huh, okay. but the thing is, we need this individual to be taken care of immediately. So it's so the ombudsman program is an oversight. It's an oversight program. Yes. yes. Okay, and they over so they overlook other uh, organizations that do that manage what that manage the one care plan. We manage the one care plan, ah, and also we are we are an independent program. Mm -hmm. uh, we are affiliated with the DPC Policy Disability Consortium, mm -hmm. and also the. Uh, Quality uh, service, quality insurance program, organization, and also Shine. Yeah. So all of us combined. Now, the One Care program, like I mentioned before, is mm -hmm. supposed to cover the whole Massachusetts, the, the state of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. As it is right now, it's not. Oh. It's still some little areas where it's still not being covered, okay. and that's where we rely a lot on Shine to take care of those individuals that are not in the area that Mass that one care can cover. Okay. So those people do get their services at the immediate time that they need it. Uh, eventually, everything will be covered completely. Right now, we just uh, hire an ombudsman for the western part of, of, Mass of Massachusetts. It's going to be located in the Worcester office. And we're doing a, 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 a tremendous amount of outreach, trying to contact individuals to let them know about the one care program. So if someone uh, is not getting a response from whatever organization that they're working with, right. they should contact the, the ombudsman um, to let them know, like, hey, I'm not getting a response, I don't understand, and, that, and then what will happen at that point? Well, let me reverse that a little bit. Okay. Each individual that has a plan also has the grieving process within the plan. Okay. They will first should, should call their, their plan to the customer service office and find out what's going on, discuss it with them. If they don't get anywhere, and <clears throat> they can contact their, their coordinator also, and they still don't get anywhere, then they contact us. Okay. Once they contact us, and the, the situation is to the point that is, the plan is not responding to us, or, and, and the individual is not getting his, his services correctly, then we'll do an investigation. Oh, okay. We'll investigate, and we see that we talk to the, with the plan, and the plan don't want to budge, then we escalate the matter. We'll mm -hmm. throw it over to MassHealth, and MassHealth will handle it from there. Okay. Also, MassHealth has a responsibility to give us feedback on what transpired, because we're looking at the 
time frame for this individual to receive his care. Yeah. Because we're talking about health care here. We're not talking about... Yeah, so if someone needs... Simple. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. is having so, an issue, they want... <clears throat> obviously, we want to take care of that. And that's our job. That's our job. Although, we are... We don't divulge. We protect confidentiality. Yep. We keep our neutrality. We don't blame anybody. Mm -hmm. We don't point fingers or anything. We just want to you find a solution. You just resolve the issue. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's, the, that's the main purpose. Awesome. Can you speak a little bit about the One Care Plan? Like, so basically, it's a way to manage someone who's got mass health and... Let me, let me give you an example. Okay, yeah. For instance, in the past, if an individual had asthma, mm -hmm. that individual had to get his medication from Medicare. Mm -hmm. Mass health would probably provide, like, maybe the CPAP machine or something like that. But the doctor requests that the individual has an air conditioner at home. Okay, then MassHealth probably will provide the, the air conditioner at home, but will not pay for the, for the repairs of the, of, of, the, of the air conditioner. Oh. Okay? In this case, right now, One Care is focusing holistically, is per person-centered. So what they do is they go ahead, the One Care plan will give them a, a team of five individuals, mm -hmm. A, co a, a care coordinator to make sure, to make sure they get appointment, uh, find out exactly what an assessment is made, to find out exactly what's going on with this individual, what, they, what are their needs, and set up appointments for to go to visit those clinics, be it transportation if needed, set up transportation, mm -hmm. set up all of that is that individual responsibility. Wow. And to make sure to come on, on a periodic basis to make sure and check with this individual to make sure that he's happy with the service he's receiving. So one care, like you said, I think that explains it, is holistic. It's, it's holistic. everything you need it's medically in one, lump, in, one, in one package. In one package. Oh, okay. So who can join? I mean, I want, I want to be in the one care plan. <laughs> any individual that any individual that is that, that is enrolled in mass health and Medicaid. Okay. From the ages of 21 to 64. Mm -hmm. Okay, and does not have like a work work insurance, mm -hmm. can join if oh. they're able to join. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, so I think you explained this, but why should someone join One Care between those? It's very simple. I'd rather go to one shop instead of going to ten. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, one of the things that is One Care does also is that we utilize community-based services around the area where the individual lives. So the individual doesn't have to go too far to receive his services, uh, and is coordinated with the care team to coordinate all the services into one area. So it'd be not only beneficial to the community, because revenue, re, re, uh, creating jobs and, uh, and stuff like that for the community also, but at the same time, the individual is getting a service needed and get to know, you know, socialize, make more contact with people. Uh, the One Care Plan is working. What we are here for is to ensure that it stays working. Yes. That yes. it doesn't deviate from that. Um, so what happens to someone once they reach that, you said, 65 threshold? Right. What happens at that point? There is a transition period, like you mentioned before. Uh -huh. uh, the, if we are from 21 to 64. Mm -hmm. 64 years of age comes about. That period right there, all in the process of 64 years of age comes about. That period between that year to 60, 63 to 64, mm -hmm. we start making plans for do the transition into China. Okay. And go from uh, there. Okay. So one care plan is the coverage between 21 and 64, and then Shine takes over at that point, helping people navigate the whole health insurance rigmarole. Right. Very and interesting. And there's another thing. An individual that is already has its own services. Meaning like their own insurance? Like or? It, it, no. If the individual is receiving care for, okay. for, from a doctor, from a from primary care physician, oh, okay. from okay, a dental okay. or whatever it may be, Whenever he comes in to become a member of One Care, he has a choice. He has a choice. He or she has a choice to either stay within the One Care, oh. and if he doesn't like, she doesn't like it, she can return back to the oh. way she used to be, or and still retain the services that she was receiving before. Okay, is it very complicated to become to uh, to join the One Care plan? Is that or is it a simple enrollment? Do you know? It's a simple enrollment, and, and it's very simple. It's just a lack of communication. And lack of knowledge from the from the consumer. Uh, yeah, I think it is a program that is. I mean, it's, I guess it's is it 
widely used? Is there lots of availability? Like, I'm very interested in knowing There's that. It's very, very widely used. Everybody that is hearing about One Care yeah. is jumping into the book because it's, it's helpful. And, and we've been having, which one of these days, and we won't go to the uh, uh, website, our website. Yep. We're going to go ahead and put in some um, examples of how other individuals have progress, their health health care okay. has great, you know, progress in, in, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And like, it's, they, we haven't had any complaint whatsoever. What we did have been, been having a complaint at the beginning when they went ahead and did the, when the, uh, the first open enrollment, when they went ahead and enrolled everybody um, by, you know, involuntarily, they just automatically enrolled. Oh. That was an issue. Yeah, that's an issue. And that was a little, a little mm -hmm. flexibility there. But now, we don't, have any, we don't have any problem. Does the One Care have an open enrollment like uh, like Shine does, or the One Care does have an open enrollment, which is started is going on right now. Just so it's the same just time in, period. At the same time period, yes. Okay. And and also including the A, B, and, and D Medicare plans. Okay. Ivy, have you had any uh, I guess clients, and obviously I don't want you to divulge anything that's confidential, that have come from One Care that you've heard yes. an anecdotes? I have received phone calls for people asking about One Care. And what have they said? What um, they want? Well, m most of the uh, One Care recipient they have to have Mass Health. Okay. Uh, for some reason, um, they got kicked out of Mass Health, whether or not submitting their income mm. or you know whatever reason um, they lost Mass Health. Then, if you lost Mass Health, you get right. kicked out of One Care. And, the, and so. what it is is that there's a certain documentation that would be sent and mailed to the to the recipient. Mm -hmm. And if the recipient, you get mail, sometimes I get mail and I look at it and I'm, yeah. I'm like, yeah, trash can, you know. And, and sometimes people don't read exactly yeah. what they're receiving and that window of opportunity to go ahead and reply back to Mass Health oh. goes out the window Ooh. and then all of a sudden, because we don't know. Yeah, you don't know what happened to the mail. We yeah. don't know what happened to the, we don't know if the individual is even still there. We can, we can insist mm -hmm. in sending emails over there, but that's about it. Yeah, I can't t tell you how often like my mail piles up, and I'm like, ugh, it's such a burden to have to go through it. Exactly. I can only imagine. Um, so I just especially wanted... a, excuse me, especially a person with a disability problem. Oh, absolutely, already. yeah, or with medical issues no that medical issues. pain. I mean, something that makes you even less inclined to want to deal and with the pile of mail. That's the reason why we, they decided to go ahead and create the care coordinator, because the care coordinator can bring all that information directly to the individual mm. and speak with him about it. And they build the relationship. They build the relationship. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, there is a question I want to ask. What is something that the One Care Ombudsman does not do? So we talked about all the things they do do. We do not represent anybody in any legal way. Okay. What we do do is we help them the, through the process. Okay. And we refer them to someone that is legally or certified to be able to handle that. Okay. We do not because we have to protect our neutrality. Yeah. Okay. And interesting. By doing that, we'll do it just that. We help the individual through the process, and we advise. We don't tell. Okay. What to do. And so you'd mentioned that there are ombudsmen in most of the state, but there are pockets where there aren't any. So what I'm presuming is that uh, let's. I'm just going to make up a number, but let's say there's five ombudsmen, and so everyone has an area to cover. Is that correct, or how does that work? For instance, I'm the bilingual ombudsman. Okay. And. Actually, I told my boss it should be multilingual ombudsman mm. because it's not just English, it's Spanish yes. that I speak. Yeah. I speak five, four, four or five other languages. Oh. Now, my thing is that I am in the office. It doesn't matter if a call comes from Western Massachusetts, Eastern part of Massachusetts, uh -huh. Central. If I'm the one there, I'm the one who's going to get that. Got it. That call. Got and it. I have to go over there. Now, yes, we have a, within our office, we have divided. You have one in Western Mass, and you have no. But this person might be, it's only one person, might be busy. So somebody has to pick up the ball. Yeah, similar to exactly. what the advocates do, right? So even though you guys all technically have your areas of Boston that cover, if you're in the office when someone calls yes. and that person's out, yes, you, you have, would we have this. You deal with that, uh, you help manage that, that right. client. One thing about Shine is that it takes more than half an hour. Most Ashine consultation is two hours. Mm. The more medication you have, the longer it takes. 
So it's important to make an appointment, right? Yes. Because then you have the time set aside. Yes. And, and then the client can feel like they're being taken care of. Yes, right? they have to have the correct information regarding their medication. Yeah. Even the dosage mm -hmm. has to be correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I know that you guys did extensive training, because I mean, this is very complicated stuff. Yes. So tell me a little bit about the training so people feel good about the fact that, um, why, why go to you? Like, what makes you so special? We, we certified by the executive of Elder Affair, mm -hmm. which is the state, and um, we have to take an exam. Uh, the classes that we were in training for was a six weeks wow. training. So um, you have to pass the exam. Without the exam, you cannot help the senior. You're not certified. So and you, every year you have to take the test. Oh, okay, that's yeah. good to know. Yeah. So you feel like really confident in your knowledge of these? Of We're very confident, but information change within yes. 24 yeah, hours. Facts. Ah, and how do you guys get <laughs> notifications about? From Shine Director, oh, okay. from the state, yeah. Okay, well, so we're, all, we're out of time, if you can believe it. Uh, why don't you give the number real quick to the Elderly Commission in case people want to okay. connect with the Shine Counselor? Okay, we, you can reach it at 617-635-4366. Okay, and then ask for a Shine Counselor. Yes. And then, Joseph, why don't you give us a couple last words? One main thing is that every individual, whenever they gotta go ahead and get involved with one care, make sure that they have the documentation and everything that they need. Okay. To make it easy for communication, talking with, the, with Mass Health and the customer service the individuals, because that's one of the things that we're seeing that is happening a lot. Because of, the, because of the bureaucracy and everything on the phone and everything, they give up and they just quit. All right. But if they prepare, they So be, be prepared. Go like that. And then you'll have some, be part of some great programs. So yeah. thank you both for coming. Uh, thank you for watching Seniors Count, brought to you by Mayor Martin J. Walsh and our Commissioner Emily Shea. To contact us, please call 617-635-4366 or the Mayor's 24-hour hotline at 617-635-4500. You can email us at elderly at boston.gov or you can find us on Facebook. See you next time. I see skies of blue and clouds of white Bright blessed days, dark sacred nights, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I think to myself.